Welcome back to part three. In the iPad Goat, in addition to the well-sold game Everybody's Gone in Rapture, we can see the foreshadowing of the enemy, that they are perfectly aware of what time we're in and that we are about to head into a reset, a closing of one era and an opening of the next. We are expecting our departure and Satan being cast down for the time of tribulation. And both these uh, expressions of the enemy are foreshadowing that. The iPad goat, uh, we've come to know that to be a celestial timekeeper. It is actually reflecting a uh, journey from the opening scene in the celestial silver gate to the closing scene in the celestial golden gate. And here you can read an in-depth study of all the celestial stargates in the Iron Goat. We've covered that in previous videos. But I've come to understand that it's also a digital representation of a timekeeping device. And that is called the Antikythera. It is an ancient timekeeper. It has been modeled upon a relic which is found in the uh, in the sea in front of the Greek island Antikythera and based on detailed digital photographs and blueprints they've been able to reconstruct this astronomical timekeeper and they've actually only this week found out that it's not just a geocentric timekeeper so earth-centric but it's also a rendition of a lunar calendar so it is completely in line with the biblical timekeeping. A detailed explanation of the Antikythera can be found over here and um, the uh, evidence which was put forward this week that is actually reflecting a lunar calendar can be read and seen over here. So let me show you first what the Antikythera actually is and maybe you can also uh, already uh, see some similarities with the opening scene of the doorknob in the iPad code and the silver gate uh, with this ancient timekeeping device. Maybe you can already see how this image is both a reflection of the initial scene in the iPad code, but also of the Heliofont logo. So in this subsequent video, you can see, if you choose to look at it, how it is actually a reflection of the lunar calendar and how a really 
nice team of, um, how do you say that, um, independent uh, researchers from New Zealand, how they have actually reconstructed the entire machine and have done this amazing discovery this week. This is a 3D reconstruction of that Antikythera, and it is reflecting the iPad code, Heliofund logo, in addition to the doorknob in the opening scene. So here is the doorknob I was speaking about, and it's actually opening up the scene in the Celestial Silver Gate. The Heliofund logo is a combination of an eclipse with a smaller celestial body, but it is also a perfect match with the front of the Antikythera. The opening scene of the iPad code after the doorknob is shown is actually showing a celestial gate, the silver gate, and the boxes are reflective of the constellations and the goat popping out of the silver gate, indicative of Satan being cast down. And this is the constellation above that, that is Auriga, the charioteer, actually holding a goat and two kid goats. So the six lights in are indicative of the Pleiades, and here is the hat of the character, which is holding a dog, which is reflective of Sirius the dog star. And a couple of scenes afterward, we see this reflection of the two towers being cast down. That is um, a replacement of the Gemini bride and groom cluster. And here you see the rendition of the celestial survey gate with Monoceros, the Sirius dog star that is depicted over here, Orion, the strong man. Here is the celestial gateway with Gemini over here and Taurus over there. So the Statue of Liberty is one of the renditions of the strong man. And the the Pope in his papal crest is also referring to the celestial golden and the celestial silver gate. Here we see one of the forerunners of the beast system, Trump, covertly presenting himself as a snake, tongue in cheek, in addition to Obama, the Pope, and William, the components of the unholy trinity, doing likewise. The serpent in the garden, Obama in one of the venues which is being designed as a snake hat. And look at the fangs especially. We see those in the iPad Go too. So after the Antichrist is being presented, so brought into the light, we can see a crumbling of the church. The uh, former videos I shared how that was reflective of the Notre Dame church, which is pointing to Mary Magdalene. We can see the snake fangs in the exit way of the church and waters breaking underneath. So this is pointing to the coming uh, bite of the serpent, the sting of death, and pointing forward to the coming disease-making vaccines. Ultimately, they will develop into the mark of the beast, which will be attributed or distributed after the tribulation midpoint. So having been led through the star gates, we end up in the celestial golden gate with the Antichrist figure rising toward the sun. At the time of the winter solstice, we see Scorpio, the sting of Scorpio, the arrow from Sagittarius, indicative of a spear, a javelin, but also of a needle, the pyramids of Giza, pinpointing this location to be near the birthing canal, the tip of the spear, at the Strait of Hormuz, Horus Tammuz, the birth of the Antichrist foreshadowed, and we see the restraining hand being lifted from the scene. The celestial golden gate this is pointing to, in addition to the annual total solar eclipse over Chile and Argentina yesterday, and this combination of Mercury, the total solar eclipse, is also a mirror image of the logo of Heliophant. The next um, 
piece of enemy signaling is foreshadowing the total solar eclipse, COVID-19, the second wave in particular, and that is the game everybody's gone to the rapture. It's developed by a company known, the Chinese Room. It has been mentioned in this previous article, so you can find more about that over here. In Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, gamers are trying to piece together why a certain town's inhabitants have suddenly disappeared in a catastrophic series of events followed by following light orbs, clues, and storylines and insight through that town. And the game ties the rapture concept to celestial signs, a sudden flu outbreak, a holocaust, a burnt offering, a sacrifice of the people by their government, and people's subsequent sudden disappearance. And recall that this has been made prior to the onset of the uh, planned pandemic. The leading first-person character of the game, Dr. Kate, apparently discovers a pattern in the stars and an amplified signal of this pattern through radio telescope and telephone lines it is affecting the people and causes flu-like symptoms and ultimately uh, infects them and kills them. So the pattern travels to Earth, infects everyone in a certain town uh, by first burning the main character's faces, and that is the uh, rendition of the first va uh, wave of a flu-like infection, and then it will produce headaches and prof profuse bleeding in the town folks, which is a foreshadowing of the second phase or wave of the pandemic. Subsequently, the bodies of the people are reduced to ashes as they are sacrificed by the government, bombing the town to prevent, quote-unquote, for their outbreak. And explicit allusions are being made to the clues in the heavens, the celestial signs, a portal opening or a heavenly gate opening at the time of an annual solar eclipse, and a virus traveling down through phone lines, resonating with two waves of a flu-like pandemic. And the impact thereof is being electronically manipulated. So they're also connecting it to what we know the 5G cell towers to be able to do. The game connects the sudden disappearance of the people to the rapture at the time of a solar eclipse. Amongst golden wheat fields, we know in the Bible foreshadows the readiness upon harvest. And in the uh, imaging of the game, in their marketing and advertising, this notion of the solar eclipse is being uh, put forward explicitly. In addition to celestial signs and stargazing, as well as quarantines due to flu, this is the first phase depiction, and then the closing of society, the lockdowns, in addition to the second wave being broadcasted. And the players are following light orbs throughout the town to piece together what happened in hindsight. And that may be um, a rendition of what many of the people who will find themselves left behind after the rapture will be left to do to piece together what happened um, because many will not be informed and instructed and will be completely overwhelmed with the events surrounding the rapture. So to me that resonated with us being transformed into light before going to heaven and the of course, the account in the scriptures of us shining our light in the darkest days of the year. And actually, the, um, the days prior to the sighting of the new moon in December are the darkest days in the year. So it is, this is reflecting the time where we are in right now. From this gain understanding that the solar eclipse is considered an open door, a closing of one time frame and an opening of the next uh, we are encouraged knowing that the bride, the Church of Philadelphia, is promised an open door to heaven. And we find that confirmation in Revelation 3.8, in addition to Revelation 4.1, when John is being taken to heaven, a foreshadowing of the rapture. The next video will offer a confirmation of this scenario in the account of David and Jonathan.